On today's MedKid, we explore the efficiency of learning in your sleep, delve into futuristical sex toys, and finally understand why songs get stuck in your head. Fish better have my money. Ugh. Why do songs get stuck in our head? Well, my friends, the culprits seem to be earworms. Our alien overlords have infiltrated the music industry and are actively brainwashing it, us to drop it like it's hot. And playing that funky music, my boy. Yeah, right. An earworm is a catchy piece of music that repeats through your mind when there is no longer music playing. No, there is no egg-laying musical parasites that will explain your new beaver fever. When your brain hears a segment of a familiar song, your auditory cortex automatically fills in the rest of the song. Essentially, your brain keeps on singing long after the song has ended. Now, our brain naturally needs to fill in the gaps in the song's rhythm. This is called a cognitive itch, or a brain itch if you will. Earworms are essentially songs that are particularly proficient at causing a cognitive itch. And uh, as well as we all know, the only way to scratch brain itch is to repeat the song over and over and over again in your mind. Unfortunately, since our brain does not actually fill out the entirety of the song on its own, it will continue to hold the loop until the information void is filled and satisfied within the auditory cortex. Now, while 99% of us have experienced this stuck song syndrome at least once in our life, women, musicians, and people who are more neurotic, tired, or stressed out seem to be more prone to earworm attacks. As for what types of songs make the best earworms, it is often songs that have a simple, upbeat melody, catchy, repetitive lyrics, and their surprise such as an extra beat or an unusual rhythm. Essentially the same factors that contribute to making a popular song. On that note, I'll gladly leave you with a sample of the world's most proficient documented earworm. Enjoy! Chili's baby back ribs. Chili's baby back ribs. Barbecue sauce. Chili's baby back ribs. Chili's baby back ribs. Barbecue sauce. Moving on to the subject we've all been waiting for, futuristical sex toys. Now, let's start with a clarification. It is universally agreed upon that the oral cavity has three main functions, mastication, pronunciation, and of course aesthetics. However, there is a fourth function that is often left, left out of textbooks and intellectual seminaries, a sexual function. While this function is considered taboo, it is constantly practiced in the focal point of our sexual behavior for centuries. Therefore, it is only fitting that we should try and augment this function. Don't you agree? Well, I know at least one person who does. Kwang Yi Ku is a practicing dentist as well as a new media artist that is currently working on designing the male masturbation cup mouth, as he so likes to call it, or using more practical words, an orthodontic retainer that is designed to enhance the pleasure received by men during, you guessed it, oral sex. This innovative form of a sex toy is made by modifying an orthodontic retainer that is custom made for each client. The upper palate of each retainer is covered with soft denture rayline material, which simulates real soft tissue and creates a sort of a bumpy, ridge surface. Kwang Yi Koo is actually trying to take things a step forward and use tissue engineering technology in order for the retainer's raised surface to have a closer resemblance to actual oral tissue. The goal of all of this is that during oral sex, the back and forth contact with the raised surface of the retainer would enhance the physical pleasure of the act. Medical science at its finest hour, bringing you a more pleasurable future. The idea that you can learn new things through some sort of magical mental osmosis while you sleep has long been wishful thinking. However, research indicates that depending on what we hear during the night, it is indeed possible to reinforce existing memories and enhance our recall after we wake up. 
There are three main components to learning and memorizing. Acquisition, consolidation, and recall. Now, acquisition occurs when we are introduced to new information and consolidation involves the stabilization of the information into long-term memory. Recall is actually the ability to access the information later on. Consolidation of information occurs during the slow wave sleep and is an essential part of the learning process. We've all heard about those language tapes that you play while you sleep, you go to bed knowing only one language and poof, you wake up being bilingual, right? Well, although such claims are far-fetched, research shows that it is not completely groundless. In one study, two groups of native German speakers were given a list of of Dutch to German words to memorize at 10 p.m. right before they went to sleep. Researchers then told one of the group to hit the hay while they kept the other awake. Both groups were exposed to audio of some words they already learned along with new ones over the next few hours. At around 2 a.m. researchers tested both groups on how many words they could remember. It turns out that the group that had been listening to the recording during slow wave sleep was able to recall more of the words they had previously learned better than the group that remained awake. The words they did not know but heard while sleeping did not seem to stick though. In another similar study, neuroscientists found that the slow wave sleep can affect your ability to learn to play a song. Interestingly enough, in both studies, participants' EEG scan observed emerging theta brain waves during the period of time in which the tapes were played. Now, theta waves are known to emerge during heightened states of learning, which usually occur during waking hours. This observation suggests that some level of learning was happening during the experiment. While learning something new while we sleep might still be unknown territory, there is no denying the fact that consolidating our knowledge during sleep is possible and highly effective. Yet the question on everyone's mind remains, can we actually learn something new during sleep? The answer is a definite maybe. It was believed that acquisition of information can only occur during the wake state. However, new data argues that new information can be solidified during REM sleep. Yet the dream amnesia that occurs in slow wave sleep and which makes us forget our dreams may play an important part in why we forget these new memories along with our dreams. If you enjoyed today's Mac Kid, like and subscribe for more. Also, if you have any questions, objections, hateful comments, or much, much deserved praises, do not hesitate to leave a comment down below. This is Alina, this was Mac Kid. See you next time.